specifically we started with the Shagari regime of 1979 to 1983 and we looked at the Buhari regime 1984 to 1985 and I made it known to you in that class that there were some kind of lackadaisy qualities possessed by the first, uh, by the second Republican uh, foreign policy or under Shagari. Yet, the foreign policy still maintained the Africa as the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy due some fundamental rules played by Nigerian international system were not uh, adequately played. Yet, the administration still supported peaceful settlement of disputes in Africa. And we see the example of the police arrows uh, movement in uh, Morocco versus uh, the south, uh, the Western Sahara. And as well, I have made it known to you that these governments ensure the expulsion of illegal. Yeah, I can't hear you very well. I'm trying to look at the network if it is not stable. Network is stable, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, I can hear you now. Well, I'm, I'm trying to review what I did in the last class. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, sir. And I said the administration of Shagari ensure the expulsion of illegal immigrants into Nigeria. And that was the era of Ghana must do. Okay. And uh, I think I asked a question in that arena then, with some of you that participated in the class answer adequately. Then I said, this, the Buhari Ijiagbon regime give room for what I called fighting of corruption by blocking Nigeria border and gives uh, the smaller country. Today, we are going to look at the foreign policy under General Ibrahim Babangida and that of Abasha, General Sanin Abasha. Now, Foreign policy under Ibrahim Badamosa Bangada was somehow interesting. Interesting in the sense that so many abnormalities put in place by the predecessors, the like of Shagari. Please, prudent, mute yourself and stop whatever you are playing there. Okay. I see some abnormalities put in place. It seems that some of you are doing something on the net. Please, within the part of this class, all video turn on. All video turn on. So, as I was saying, I said, Babangida regime reverse certain principles put in place by the previous administration. And that is what we are going to do as here. There's a kind of paradigms in the Babangida regime away from what we witness under Shagari and Babangida and Buhari regime. One of that is the fact that this administration view foreign policy as a fundamental affair of the state, meaning that since foreign policy akin to the progress and development of the state, then there's need to put better hands in place. Don't forget this is a military regime. And in a military regime, you no know, military are trained to fight war. Some are not aware of some kind of foreign policy that needs to be put in place to engender progress in the state. Hence, the incursion of professionals under Babangida into the administration. Professionals were put in place by Babangida to manage the foreign affairs of the state. 
very close to the image you are seeing now, you see Professor uh, Boladi Akinyemi. This name is very known when we are talking about foreign policy. And when you come to your UTME, you are going to see some kind of things put in place by this professor under the Babangida regime, which I'm going to highlight in the course of this uh, class. So having put professionals in place to pilot the aspects of the foreign policy of the administration, as you can see, just as I've said, the Bangida view foreign policy as a fundamental principles of the states. And for him to achieve his foreign policy objective, professionals were put in plan. This professional include Professor Bolaji Akinyemi, and he was succeeded by Iki Owantipu, and Iki Owantipu succeeded by Riwan Lipman. Okay, these were the people that served as ministers of foreign affairs or external affairs under Mapangida. But major work that are known in the affairs of foreign affairs or diplomatic relations. Can you hear me? Hi, Shaq. Cracking. Hey, cracking. Mm. Is this stable now? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So, I said major policy were put in place by Bolaji Akinyemi as Minister of External Affairs. And what are those things? One of them is the fact that there's what we call TAC. TAC, Technical Aid Corps. Please take note of this. Olaji Akiyemi governized the putting together of a policy called Technical Aid Corps in 1887. And uh, what is the of the Technical Aid Corps? It was created to serve as a platform to ensure quick response to the need of countries in the Southern Hemisphere. Please mute yourself when you are not talking. I said to Akin the response, Jessica, mute yourself. Don't allow me to use my center part of the to my show now. Okay. I said to quick, as in to ensure quick response to the need of country in the southern hemisphere. When I say country in the southern hemisphere, please listen. Country in the southern hemisphere are developing countries. We have countries in the northern hemisphere and country in the southern hemisphere. The country in the northern hemisphere are developed countries like USA, like Canada, like Britain. They are developed. But the countries in the southern hemisphere are developing countries, and that is where Nigeria belongs to. So when you hear about Listen, when you hear about South-South relationship, when you hear about South-South relationship, there's no meaning about South-South in Nigeria. In international system, it means relationship between the developing countries or among the developing countries. So here now, Nigeria has established the technical aid course under the regime of Babangida to ensure quick response to a country in the standard hemisphere. You know, those countries in the standard hemisphere, developing countries, they all usually have one need or the other. And this government ensures that tax is put in place to ensure this uh, adequately provided at the point of the need of those uh, countries. Today, technical aid call is still in existence. I think. Uh, this, what is the name of this man that served as a special advisor to Jonathan Steele is the director of the technical aid for now, I'm trying to recollect his name. Uh, Pius or Senior Kami or something like that, the director of the technical aid for now. Then aside that, Bolaji Akiyemi under Babangida ensured the, 
what we call the Concert of Medium Pass Initiative, also in 1987. Take note of this. If you have your UTMA Pass question, you will have seen question in this arena. All this area, they are common in UTMA. The concept of medium pass was established, was initiated in 1987 by Bola Diapiyemi under the regime of Babangida as part of the initiative of the foreign policy. I believe I'm communicating. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, what is the essence of the concept of medium power? It was meant to provide medium of what mandatory rule on issues that could lead to conflicts and assert Nigerian leadership rule in Africa and economic diplomacy. Totally in Africa, this concept of medium power extends to all that countries in the southern hemisphere, like in Argentina, among others. This gives Nigeria a kind of the normal role as giant of Africa to play the leading roles in settling in, in the settlement of conflicts in African continent and also ensure economic diplomacy when Nigeria will serve or give a kind of opportunity to meet the needs. I mean, the economic need of some African countries and other countries in the world, as the case may be, in the South-South uh, relations, as I have stated previously. Take notes of the tax, the purpose, who established it, under host regime, and the concept of medium part, who initiated it, and the purpose of it. I said if you are not talking much yourself, please. All right. Aside this, on that Babangida regime, we are speaking at the foreign policy objective trust of Babangida regime. It was under the leadership of Babangida, especially between 1986 and 1988, that the ECOWAS protocol on free movement of citizens actually took effect. Normally, in ECOWAS, there's what called free exit and free entry. But it was not in practice until the regime of uh, Babangida. Don't forget that Buhari closed the border when he became the head of state in 1984 85. Okay? But during this regime, the protocol that established ECOWAS was that there will be free movement among the ECOWAS country was put into practice, okay? And at the same time, he reversed Buhari he conceived closure of border to punish the smaller neighboring countries. Borders were open. And Nigeria became the arrowhead of ECOWAS under a Bangida regime. When I say become the arrowhead, Nigeria actually assumed the role of leadership as it were in 1975 when ECOWAS was established under Babangida again. And the ECOWAS monitoring group, take note of this too, the ECOWAS monitoring group was established in August 1990. Why? It was established to settle or to serve as a peacekeeping mission within the Anglophone countries of member state of uh, ECOWAS. When I say Anglophone, I mean the English-speaking countries that are members of ECOWAS. And one of such is that ECOMONG was used to serve as a peacekeeping mission in Liberia and Syria alone. This is also an objective question. This also objective. Let me ask you, under old regime, the ECOMONG was established in Nigeria. It was under the Bangida regime, I think you can see in 1990. And let me ask, also ask you, the first or the major work of ECOMONG was to settle or to serve as peacekeeping mission. They, they will not give you country. They may say Chad and uh, Libya, Liberia and Syria alone, Somalia and this. If you know, it's Liberia and Syria alone. 
because the purpose of ECOMONG actually was to serve as a peacekeeping mission for the Anglophone countries. Okay, and Alabiria is one of the Anglophone countries in the West Africa. We have Nigeria, we have uh, the Gambia, we have Ghana, we have Sierra Leone, we have Liberia. These are Anglophone countries in the West Africa, uh, in the economic community of West African states. Hello, please, am I communicating? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Then, close to this, there has been a strong relationship. Take note of all this fundamental information. The objective question, if you want to do well in UTM, you must not ignore foreign policy in this perspective. He, like, as on that, board, on that um, Babangida, the relationship between Nigeria and Israel that have been strained as a result of the Israel-Arab War in 1973 was restored. There was a conflict. In fact, there have been conflict between Israel and the Arab countries in the Middle East since Israel was established in 1948. If you are not, if you are not aware, don't forget that the State of Israel was established in 1948. And the state of Israel was established as a result of uh, Zionism. That's an objective question. You may come across in your UTM. Zionism led to the establishment of the state of Israel. Zionism led to the establishment of the state of Israel in 1948. So since that time, there have been a series of conflicts between, Nigeria, between Israel and the Arab countries. So the Arab-Israeli conflict in 1973, the rule Nigeria, the support Nigeria granted to some of these Arab countries, strained relationship between Nigeria and uh, Israel. But this relationship that had been strained was restored under Babangida regime. I think that is a credence. You can see the achievements. So Babangida is a Maradona. Hmm? But you can see the achievement. This would have been achieved if Babangida has not, uh, had not put experts in place to pilot the affairs of the ethnic relation. He knows he couldn't do it, but he brought the best brain into office to manage the external at the head, the achievement you have seen in the arena of foreign affairs in this uh, area. Then, close to read too, Nigerians also require, Nigeria as an individual, as a country, was recognized in the international system. Nigerians as individual, Nigeria as a country, was recognized international system. As a matter of fact, Nigeria for the first time emerged as the president of the General Assembly in the 44th session of the UN in uh, 1989. Take notes. Let me ask you that the First permanent representative of the of Nigeria to the UN that emerged as the president of the General Assembly is Joseph Garba. Hmm? Take note, Joseph Garba. Take note of that. Okay. Aisha, any problem? You are cracking. I can't hear you. Well. I thought it was in my next one. I'm looking at the... Okay. Just pop, give me a few minutes. Let me switch the network. Again. See, no Nigerian network can be so funny. Let me switch the network and see how it will. Can you still hear me now? Hello? Uh, so I can hear you, but it's cracking. You very OK. Somebody said, can you hear Somebody said, can you cracking? So as I was saying, I said 
Nigeria record recognition in the international system under this regime. And one of these recognition happened to be the recognition and election of Nigeria as the president of the uh, UN General Assembly in the 44th session of the uh, UN uh, meeting in 1989. Take notes and the person, the person of Joseph Garba. Also in 1990, Emeka Anyanku was elected as the Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations. Take note of that. These are fundamental things you need to know under this. Let me ask you, Nigeria that served as the, the first Nigerian to serve, the first, I think for now, the first and the only Nigeria to serve as the Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations is Emeka Ayanoku. And now we have a second Nigerian serving as the President of the General Assembly. And the second Nigerian is Mohamed Bandi, is the incumbent president of the uh, UN General Assembly. Mohamed Bandi. Mohamed Bandi is the present, is the present UN General Assembly president. Can you hear me very well now? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. So let's start all these achievements accrued to Babangida. Let's start all these achievements accrued to Babangida. This regime become a pariah again as a result of the annulment of the June 12 presidential election. And you know, international system, by the time you're going to be taught United Nations, United Nations support democratization of all countries in the world. But this government again stabbed democracy by annulling the, the most, the, the, in fact, in the history of Nigeria, the only election that seemed to be the fairest in the history of Nigeria, Babangida annulled on June 12th. The election that will have ushered in our third republic in the, and brought MKO Adiola into office as the president of Nigeria was annulled. And Nigeria becomes a notorious country, international system, towards the end of this uh, regime. And Babangida stepped aside. Babangida stepped aside in June 1993. And we had Chief Enesoneka as the head of the National Interim Government. We had, can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you, sir. All right, all right, thank you. So I said we have Enesoneka, and in November that same year, and Ashinikan was pushed out of office and he was succeeded by General Sani Abasha. Abasha has a notorious person. <laughs> you know, the fact that Babangida, towards the end of his regime, destroyed the international friendly Nigeria had. Understand? destroyed that and as a result of this most of countries in the world was not friendly with Nigeria again. But uh, Abasha was seen the situation. Okay. Because he operated on what I call a reactive a reactive and uh, isolationism. And due to this Human rights were seriously violated under this regime. How? Anybody that one way or the other go against the will of the government were dealt with. And as a matter of fact, Ken Sarawiwa and the Etoguni were assassinated by this regime. And this brought the relationship between Nigeria and other countries to the standstill. As Nigerian government was sanctioned by the G8 and the Commonwealth of Nations, let me ask you: Why was Nigeria sanctioned by the Commonwealth of Nations as a result of the abolition of human rights by Abasha in 1995? Take note of that. Nigeria was sanctioned from the Commonwealth of Nations as a result of the violation of the human rights and refusal to allow democracy to 
they operated in Nigeria under Abacha. Take note of this. That is the only question they may ask you here. And because of the fact that uh, other countries were free to recognize Nigerian government, Abacha decided to focus his foreign policy on the countries in the third, in the third world country, like in the Middle East, countries that could not help Nigeria, countries that could not produce something that will salvage Nigeria economy. So the foreign policy under Abacha was a notorious foreign policy. And this was a result of the refusal to democratize Nigeria and the violation of human rights. And that led to the sanction of Nigeria by the most country in the world, especially the Commonwealth of Nations. You will see how this was restored when democracy returned to Nigeria in 1999 in our subsequent class. Thank you. That's what I'm going to stop today. And I want to I want to welcome your question now. Question if there's any from you. Take note of fundamental things I said you should note. We should know what Babangida brought into place under his regime, how he established the tax, technical aid called hmm? uh, millions of uh, millions powers or what initiative under the regime of uh, Professor Bola Yemi as the foreign minister, so minister of uh, foreign affairs. And don't forget that the relationship between Nigeria and Israel was restored during this period. And don't forget that ECOWAS monitoring group was established during this period. Don't also forget that the uh, free movement, the protocol that is a free movement among the ECOWAS country was put into practice during this regime. And don't forget that the closure of border put in place by the Buhari regime was reversed during this regime. So don't forget also that Nigerians were elected to various executive positions in the international system during this regime. Joseph Garba was elected as the president of the General Assembly. Emi Kanyanku was elected as the Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations. Okay? Take note of all these. These are areas you can come across question or get to question the UTMA. And that Abasha operated what we call reactive and uh, isolationism in his foreign policy. And this was the result of his refusal to allow democracy to operate and violation of human rights. And Nigeria was sanctioned by Commonwealth of Nations under Abasha regime. These are what you need to take note in this lesson today. Thank you. Your question. Your question. Yes, yes, you have the floor, Prudent. So, in, in one of the questions, the assembly speaker was said, uh, In what era did USA have a problem with Nigeria because of the uh, support of MPLA? Okay. This was mean of MPLA. MPLA stands for Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. MPLA stands for Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. So it was a group uh, established and led by Agustin Honeto. It was a group established and led by Agustin Honeto. Okay. I can answer your question now. Yes, sir. All right. Is there another question? Yes, 